All right, everyone, in this video, I'm going to uh, show how to, hopefully, if everything works right, uh, change out the uh, charging fuse to a basic a GM OEM part. Actually, it's pretty inexpensive to help with the charging of the AGM battery. Uh, lots of mystery and questions seems to be floating around on the internet, whether you need to, if you can, if it's even possible to boost voltage. So I'm gonna try to explain how that all works and what we're actually doing. Uh, done a little bit of research about it. I know maybe just a little more about electrical than it takes to be dangerous. So I'm gonna try to explain it the best I can. One thing I can show you, and this is always seems to be a, a big question, right on this AGM battery, which is a X2 power or North Star, it says right here, uh, following settings, float charge of 13.5 to 13.8, which is what we I know this vehicle does factory right now, cycle service at 14.4 to 14.8. So what that essentially means is for this battery uh, to work at full capacity and to actually utilize everything we need in this battery, we need 14.4, I believe it was, 14.4 volts to charge it, which the factory 400 does not put out. But I'm going to try to explain how we're going to make it do that. Uh, it's not snake oil. It's should be pretty simple all right everyone this is kind of just the uh, the baseline for the voltage um haven't done anything other than install the north star battery the agm battery so if this will show up i don't know it's gonna show my camera but uh so i just drove an hour or so home so this is kind of your average uh just idling it's 60 70 degrees outside and you can see that we're getting 13.4 according to the control module and 13.6 at the obd2 port um, and I'm not sure which one's more accurate, so I'm just kind of running with both of them. So this just gives you a baseline. This is with it at idle. Uh, this is about as charged as it's gonna get, I believe. So my goal is to, uh, in a second, we'll see the voltage with it shut off, and then I'm gonna try to remember to check it tomorrow before I start it to go to work. But I'll probably forget, because I'll just remote start it and leave. Um, but this gives us a good starting point. So when we do the fuse, we can see what our voltage change is. Uh, so with that being said, if we shut it off, not running, you know, our battery hovers just under 13 volts. So I'm sure that'll drop pretty quick as it sits here. Uh, I'd imagine it'll hover around 12 and a half overnight. But again, that's the starting point. We'll see what it does. This gives us a good baseline so we know what that fuse does when we change it out. All right, so it is, oh, almost 12 hours later since the initial test, just to have it run the vehicle has been sitting overnight. It is, I don't know, 30 degrees outside, it's been cold all night, it's been freezing all night. So you see the battery's down to 11.9, according to the control module, 12 volts at the uh, OBD2 port. Uh, again, vehicle hasn't ran, so that's just overnight drain from the cold and what have you. No fuse, stock system. So we'll start her up. This is of course gonna be a little skewed because it's gonna idle high. So cold start, 1400 RPMs, we're charging at 13.8, 14 volts. So again, this is just another baseline to kind of show where we're at. So I'll let this warm up, it'll come down and idle. I'm gonna leave in about 10 minutes and we'll just grab another quick video. Okay, so we've been uh, idling for 10 minutes or so this morning just to warm it up a little bit. It is 30 degrees outside. Uh, and as expected, everything kind of leveled off back to 13.6, 13.7-ish volts charging at an idle. Uh, intake air temp at 45 degrees, so it's it's cold out. Uh, anyways, that gives us our baseline. We can see where we're at with the stock fuse. So as soon as I get the aftermarket, the GM fuse, the resistor fuse that's supposed to up the voltage, the AKA voltage booster fuse, we'll get that in there, and then we'll do this again to see what kind of voltage change we have. So again, that's the baseline. Five in the morning, we're getting 13.7 volts at an idle. All right, just a quick update. Been driving for 10 or 15 minutes at you know 50, 60 miles an hour. No changes on the charge as suspected. Once the rig warmed up, that's kind of where it was at. So we've been sitting here at 13.6 to 13.8, touching 13.9 at times. Um, again, just cruising along. So. All right, one more baseline, still no changes. Um, here we are warmed up at an idle, 13.8 volts. Uh, again, haven't changed out the fuse yet, getting ready to do that right now. So this is just another baseline to show that we're pretty consistent. This is, again, all stock, just to change battery out. So 
let's get it changed over. I'm gonna kind of go over that right now and then we'll see what the results look like over the next few days. All right, so uh, this is a genuine GM Fuse. Uh, yeah, Chevy product, but they're pretty standard. Um, ordered it off of eBay, I believe it was five, six, seven bucks, something like that. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below of where you can order this exact same one, as well as an alternate. There's an aftermarket one uh, that I believe works the same. I, just, I decided to go pay a few bucks more for this one. Um, one thing I've read, and we're gonna find out now if this is true, is there might need to be a little modification of the fuse itself. So, we're gonna go pull the factory fuse and then compare them. Anyways, we're gonna do that now. Got this nice little fuse kit. I believe it has a little fuse wrench in it that makes life easy. It does. Uh, this kit here is a savior also if you ever need to just keep extra fuses. I believe this was an eBay purchase as well. Or I'm sorry, an Amazon purchase. I'll put a link to this below too. All right, so back up under the hood. Uh, this is part of the reason I didn't want to mount anything to this relay and fuse box. Not that you ever need into it too often, but when you do, it's nice to be able to just remove it. I know a lot of people like to mount stuff to the top, but that just makes this more of a pain. Um, so the fuse we're looking for is this 7.5 amp Alt S fuse, which is going to be that red fuse right there. So it's between the 15 and the 20. Um, and I tried to explain what this fuse does. It does not carry 7.5 amps uh, I believe they just use that because it's one of the lower amperage fuses they can find all that is is a signal wire that goes from the alternator to the computer in the vehicle basically so we're gonna pull that out bring it back compare this with the GM diode fuse and see what modifications we have to make which I believe is just a, a little bit of filing all right so I got the fuse pulled out it's gonna be kind of hard to show on camera the differences there's the two fuses I'll take a picture so I can throw a photo of it up but basically point to these need to grind that off right there and that off right there to make it straight shot so that the fuse is no wider than the gripping part. So anyways, I'm just going to take it in the shop, throw it in the vice real quick and just take a final to it. It should only take a second. All right, just to give an idea. So I just threw it in the vise and started filing it down. Pretty simple. I'm just going to do a little bit. I think I got it. I'm going to go try it. And if it doesn't fit and needs more filing, I'll just file it took maybe two minutes and you could probably honestly do it with a nail file and a pair of pliers um but since i had the vice and everything here did that so i'm gonna go see if it fits and file more if i need to all right again i don't know if it's going to show up on camera it's pretty fine tuning but i've got a picture of it so i can show what i filed off again i just tried it it fits perfect it's snug that was easy i got again just a few minutes of filing into it so go from there all right, so before I drop that in there, I wanna kind of explain what that fuse does to help everybody understand what's going on here. We're not making the alternator more powerful or, or producing any power that doesn't exist. The way the alternator works, so your alternator is capable of putting out the voltage needed to charge this battery. That alternator will put out more power than we need. But as with most everything on modern vehicles, including the Forerunner, it's computer controlled. So factory battery only needs about 13.7 volts, which is why that's the only voltage we see. The alternator cranks out power goes through the charging system but that sends a signal through this fuse to the computer that computer says hey you're putting out 13.7 volts everything's good let's just keep maintaining that what we are doing is installing a fuse the gm fuse with the resistor in it which actually cuts that signal back so we're basically tricking the computer into thinking the alternator isn't putting out enough power computer in turn ups that voltage lets the voltage regular up things a bit more um so again we're not magically creating more power from the alternator. It's always capable of doing it. It's just limited. So we're tricking the computer into allowing more power to flow through so we can properly charge the AGM battery. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's not snake oil, it's electricity. So again, just putting that fuse in there that's gonna trick the computer into letting it put more power to the charging system. So I'm gonna grab that and we're gonna drop it in there and then see how this goes. All right, one other thing to mention is because this fuse has a diode in it, which is basically a check valve, or only lets electricity flow one direction. That's got almost like an arrow on it. I don't know which way it's supposed to go, but my understanding is if you put it in the wrong way, you simply get a, a, a no charging or a check engine light, and so you just gotta take it out and flip it around. So I'm gonna guess on direction for now. I'll drop that in there, and then we'll just restart it and see how it goes. 
but as you can see, fits in there perfectly fine. So set this aside. I'm gonna start it real quick and see if we get a light or what's going on. All right, so I just started it up and I apparently got it in the right direction. And I was gonna do a little more formal test of this, but initially, I, I literally, I just started it uh, not even a minute ago. We're basically at an idle and 14.4 to 14.6 volts. So, uh, you know, initially everything looks like it's good to go. And I suspect we are, but again, I will kind of test this out and, and do a few more cold starts and whatever. But uh, I tell you what, it looks like it's working. I'm gonna go get a video of the direction the fuse is going just so you have it for reference. So everybody knows which way it goes. So I don't, you don't have to question it when you do it. But like I said, initially it looks good. All right, so I'll get a picture of this, but uh, basically standing outside the driver fender looking in here battery to give you your orientation uh, the marking on the fuse basically has an arrow pointing to the right so and that seems like it's the right direction so that said uh, I'm calling this a success I'm like I said I'm gonna drive it a little bit more and I'll probably get uh, a voltage of the battery tomorrow after this rig sits for the night just so we can see if there is much of a change because the way AGM batteries work is something like they lose 50% of their storage if they're not charged all the way up so it's that first last few volts or last half a volt or what have you that really puts the storage in these things so last time after it sat for a night and i looked we were at 11.9 i think maybe 12 volts in the next morning after 12 hours so i'll try to check this again tomorrow and see if there's any change actually it won't matter because i won't drive it tonight so it might not be too later this week we'll see but anyways i'm gonna button this thing back up and i just noticed there's a fuse puller in here huh neat all right all right, so had to run an errand tonight. Uh, I've driven 34 miles, been gone for about an hour, about an hour driving. Um, and one thing I've noticed, the voltage when driving hovers right around 14.3, 14.4. Uh, and then when idling, it comes down. When I first started driving, that wasn't the case, it stayed up. So I don't know if it's just a matter of the battery getting a charge put on it and then not needing that charge now, because I'm assuming that battery's you know, charged all the way up. Um, so it only needs to do that 14.1 volts. Uh, but just now, literally a minute ago, doing 50 miles an hour, you know, it was at 14.3-ish. So, uh, anyways, I guess that just goes to show that it worked. Um, again, tomorrow, I will try to get up. This will be parked for 12 hours or so. It's snowing now, so it's not cold, but not warm. So I kind of put a test on the battery and let's see what the voltage is in the morning when I get up, just to kind of have a, a comparison to what it was. All right, so it's the next morning been about 17 hours since we went for that quick drive and just under 12 volts so i think that's about where it was last time even with the stock charging um i don't know if it's because we just didn't drive enough or it's really going to make that big of a difference on how much voltage is left after just one night so that may not be the best test but we can start the rig Let's see what we get here so Obviously it charges at a higher voltage. So overall, I think it worked. Um, actually, I know it worked when it shows that it worked. How much it worked, I don't know. How much we really benefit, I couldn't say for exactly, uh, but it didn't hurt anything. And I do believe it's gonna extend the life of the battery and give us a little more capacity. So anyways, just gonna end off the video there. Uh, again, thank you everyone. Links in the description below on the parts we use so you can do it yourself. and. If this fails or, or anything goes wrong with it, I will definitely post it up and share, but uh, I don't see it going bad or going wrong or anything happening. So, thanks again.